welcome to Unlocked. I'm Miranda Sanchez filling in this week for Ryan McCaffrey as he takes a well-deserved vacation. This week we have plenty to talk about though, starting off with Red Dead Redemption 2's gameplay trailer, which we are super excited for here. Um, we have more on Shadow of the Tomb Raider because that is our iGen first, if you haven't already checked that out. And then we have more on Fallout 76 and Doom, Doom Eternal news, excuse me, out of QuakeCon. But first, if you haven't heard, Unlocked has moved. You'll be able to watch every Tuesday at 3 p.m. at unlocked.ign.com. That's right, you can now see the show a full 24 hours before you'll hear or see it anywhere else. Now, on with the show. Joining me is Dustin Legary. Hi, everybody. Brandon Tyrell. Hello, hi. And John Ryan, resident Red Dead expert. Aw, Red, yeah. Red Dead expert. Red Dead expert. That's Aww. a great title. Right? I like that. I love I'll hang on to that for as long as I can. Put that in your pocket. Yep. Y'all ready to talk about some horses? Oh, oh I'm man. so ready to talk about it. Did you know that the horse bite strength is 500 pounds per square inch? That is stronger than the cougar or the wolf. That is I terrifying. Hungry like a horse. Is there a uh, bite mechanic in Red Dead Redemption 2? I really hope so. <laughs> yeah. I really hope there's like an angry pet thing where it's like you're trying to brush it and it just bites you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A third of your HP is just gone. <laughs> so, of course, like like we just said, we want to lead in with that because Red Dead Redemption 2, like we've been speculating, it's like, when are we going to see the gameplay? And finally I said, hey, you you technically have before, but now here for sure yeah. is like the HUD and everything you would big see. Old, yeah. Big old six-minute trailer this week. Yeah. 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 There is a lot. And like what blows me away is that they managed to fit so much of what we saw back in, in spring into that six minutes. I mean, we sat down and we watched 45 minutes worth of gameplay and they crammed it into just over five minutes. It's crazy. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's not everything we saw, obviously, yeah. but like they're, it's a really good primer for what y'all can expect. What's funny is you you and I were talking about it after you went up there and you were saying, oh, yeah, you have these, uh, these moments where you meet somebody on the side of the road and they're like, hey, keep moving, pilgrim. And you're like, all right, whatever, man. I don't care. <laughs> yeah. And I saw that in the trailer and I was like, JR was right. JR was yeah. right. <laughs> oh, man, that's going to be, a, I'm going to get that tattooed on my. <laughs> JR was right. <laughs> JR was right. Uh, strike this. <laughs> Kill this. No, yeah. yeah. So I don't, I don't think you'd want to have that tattoo. No. Cool. On myself, it'd Not be too weird. Much. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I would say, oh, okay. That's, that's you. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's it. I think it's really, it's really nice to finally be able to just be like, this is what I was talking about, and mm -hmm. for folks to be able to not just have to take my word on it blindly. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm curious. Like, I've been on Unlock before. I've talked at length all over IGN about you know what I saw, how I feel about what I saw. But I'm curious after seeing some of the new mechanics in action, where do you guys kind of land on it? What strikes you as super interesting, or what do you like the most? So. Sorry, go ahead, Miranda. So really enough, at least for me, it was just the expanse of the wilderness. Like, I was like, oh, yeah, I want to be in towns. I want to meet people. I want to see people on the side of the road and, like, yell at them. But <laughs> just seeing, like, the cool environments they have, it's like you can go to the desert or the mountains or you can see someone falling off a cliff and maybe help them. <laughs> and I think that was just exciting to have, like, those moments of peace and just being alone. Yeah. And I think that's, like, really cool because, I mean, there's places where you could do that in, like, GTA, but I think with how Red Dead Redemption 2 is positioning it, it seems a lot cooler, and, like, there's things to find and explore in there, yeah. and, of course, there's hunting, and I really want to just go live with some bears. Did you, right? but, Did you, you know? I don't think you actually want to live with bears. Did you no, see that big cowboy man <laughs> threw a deer over his shoulder and was just walking it into yeah. camp? So, like, do you know how heavy deer is? <laughs> that's what blew me away when we first saw this demo with Arthur when he went hunting was that he was just, like, it was, like, nothing. He just, like, up and loaded over his shoulder yeah, just walked seriously. back to his horse. I'm just, like, dude. Dude, that guy is strong. <laughs> Video game alert. <laughs> like, I really hope that he's got, like, Bane strength in any uh, kind of unarmed fight where I can just, like, pick up a dude and break him. <laughs> just pick up your horse. Oh, yeah. oh, man. Oh, if only. I mean, look, I'm very scared that, like, because your horse has that bond with you that you have to sort of, you know, cherish and, and foster and love mm. your horse a lot, or you can just be a monster. You're gonna. Least. You're worried about <laughs> Fable? Like, I, it's going to go the Fable I, I'm route. worried about my horse dying. Yeah. I'm worried yeah. about it. I mean, because that, that was one of the things, like, the, the uh, co-studio head over Rockstar North told us one of these times that he was playing, and, like, he had this horse who he'd fucking worked with and worked with and worked with, and he loved it. And then, he, like, broke its leg out in the middle of the desert. <gasps> oh, no! It was slowly just bleeding out and dying because the horse throws a leg. It's pretty uh, much done for. And he awful. didn't have any of the medicine, so he, like, had to run back to town and, yeah. like, pick up the stuff to get it. And, like, by the time he got back, his horse had died. Aww. So did he make a sandwich? Or? No. <laughs> so well, I mean, Dustin, get out of here. <laughs> look, no I mean, look, way. I, his horse is dead, right? So what I'm really <laughs> bummed at is you can't, you know, you can't do the fireman carry just for your horse. You can't just be like, come on, buddy, we're yeah. going to do it. Just, like, yeah. I just see a dude just, like, dragging his horse <laughs> back into town, just like, doctor. And that's cool. I mean, that, that sort of choice and consequence. My other favorite moment of the trailer was he's walking on the ledge of... I don't know, what looked like Sierras. 
And uh, there's a dude just hanging off the ledge. Yeah. yeah, that was a good part. And there's a little prompt at the bottom that says, help or kill. And I'm yeah. like, what? <laughs> and then immediately after, he's like, should I have killed you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the part the part that I liked is just seeing him actually riding the horse. And it looks like the mechanics have greatly improved, obviously, from mm-hmm. the first oh, yeah. game. But uh, I'm really interested to see how they managed to make that feel natural and just sort of organic and real. Like, you're in control of this animal, and you can control him in a way that allows you to get where you're going and also like do some sort of cool tricks but also like. have the ability to basically do dressage yeah, yeah. exactly yeah. well because i mean that's one of those crazy things where it's like they they spent so much time building this i mean the the horse control in the first red dead was really it, best horse control up until that point mm-hmm. for sure and really at the time yeah yeah i mean honestly up until probably Witcher three. Witcher three, I would say since mm. really. Well, it was like um, well, what was there? There was Shadow of the Colossus that had a horse with some decent horse mechanics and Red yeah. Dead One, yeah. And that was about it that I can think of off the top. Of my yeah, head. I mean there have been a couple of other like I mean, world. Okay, I mean <laughs> like Breath of the Zelda. Wild was yeah. nice well, enough. Yeah, like yeah, having yeah, it go works. follow on a path if like after a mm-hmm. while, like, yeah, you have yeah, enough relationship, it'll yeah. just go. I feel like Geralt and Roach was probably my second favorite horse. Yeah, um, horse pair. This is now our favorite horses in video. Yeah, uh, we're all horse to, girls we're horse now. Yeah. <laughs> we're all horse girls now. Um, but be, so, like you know, it's because they took the time to make Red Dead One's horses work to yeah. to not only serve as a functional vehicle, but to get you from A to B, and also to be as close to realistic as I could get it at the time. And I mean, you know, that was almost a decade ago, and they mm-hmm. had a team of people working literally just on the horse itself for years at this point you spend four or five years just building a horse (laughs) i can't wait for the behind the scenes like dev diaries that always come out after a big game like this where you just see a horse covered in styrofoam balls like galloping (laughs) through a studio yeah all right we got it again peanut yeah they have a they have a lot of horses too like that's what they were mentioning is and we have like i think a whole video on it I think we do actually. Yeah, I think uh, how I think many kinds of horses put that together? Yeah, yeah. Um, where it's. But I mean, that's the thing. It's like in the first one, it was basically just like there were different breeds, but they were sort of just different like color palettes. But you can yeah. see them here. Mm-hmm. Um, you got the work horse. Got, yeah, you've got yeah. Uh, like a regular farm horse. You've got more of a uh, riding horse, like for racing. You've got Clydesdales for like hauling giant uh, carts full of logs. There's a deer. Someone's got to move your The other thing that really stood out to me was uh, the lighting effects. Effects are phenomenal. The environments all look yeah. true true to their character. Yeah. And it's not just one palette. It looks like that you actually go to different areas and each sort of has its own aesthetic and feel. It's sort of bummed. Yeah. I really like that. Yeah. 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 I mean, we know that. Is that a gator? Yeah. 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 It's a gator. Also one of the most terrifying gators I think I've seen in games recently. There's your bear. Go, you bear, go. Mm-hmm. Oh, that bear's going to win that fight, hands down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, in, in, environmentally, and oh, this mm-hmm. is actually one of my favorite things, mm-hmm. too, that I somehow managed to forget to throw, uh, call out to when we did that big, huge rewind last week. Um, do you basically have uh, this thing called environmental awareness, uh, which is uh, not to one-to-one it directly, but you basically have detective mode for the woods. Mm-hmm. Um, Forrest Batman? <laughs> pretty much, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it lets you essentially like God, that's track things, right? Isn't and that's so what I meant about the horse mechanics. Yeah, there, yeah, yeah. So you, I mean, you can see. Mm-hmm. Sorry, we're like sort of just like live casting of this trailer. Here yeah, now. yeah. If um, you're listening to the audio version, sorry, you should probably just throw. Oh, we'll, we'll, yeah. we'll, yeah. we'll pull back on it. Um, you can see in the trailer uh, towards the end. There's a great bit where he sort of rears his horse around in a very, very tight circle and then gallops mm-hmm. off. Um, and you see when that happens, like you're able, like if you want to just like push the stick to the right and go, like you can do a big wide turn with your horse, but you're also able to literally just have your horse turn around in little teeny tiny circles on a dime. If, mm-hmm. That's what it looks like when you do dressage because it's <laughs> horse dancing. It is horse um, dancing. It's horse dancing. Um, but you can, you have that finite ability of control because they've just been working on it so long to be able to put all these details into yeah. it. Mm-hmm. Um and yeah, I mean, I'm super curious to see more of that. Like our inventory system is now sort of based on like your horse uh, because no longer is there the giant John Marston pulls a bunch of guns out of his yeah. ass wheel. The it's, magical bag of holding that yeah. every character seems <laughs> yeah. to have. Exactly, exactly. It's, it's, it's like saddlebag based now. Yeah, so basically you can carry, I think, two ranged weapons and then one or two pistols. Mm-hmm. Um, and it sort of looks like uh, somebody brought it to my attention last week where it's basically... Uh, mirroring something from Max Payne 3, where if you have like a weapon out, because there's this really cool moment in the trailer where Arthur is, uh, he's running with a shotgun, he switches to a revolver because he's still sprinting because he can't really fire a shotgun revol- reliably while you're sprinting, switches to a pistol, uh, takes a couple of shots, and then 
throws the pistol back in his holster, throws the shotgun from his off hand instead of like being slung or holstered elsewhere mm. into his main hand to fire and shoot. And I thought it was super interesting to see sort of just like, again, little tiny details like that. Um, where you can see that sort of inspiration from previous Rockstar titles and, and see how the you know various iterations that they've done over different mechanics throughout their games throughout the years have actually managed to work really, really well. Um, like GTA V, for example, still has the giant bag of holding weapon wheel, yeah. um, but that's also going to make for a very different experience with this one, mm. whereas... You know, this is much more about grounding you in this world where it's like, you know, the whole reason they have the new interaction system is so that you are more immersed in it. It's that is that fidelity, not just on a visual level, which they've clearly nailed, um, but that sort of really intense uh, interactability or interactivity that you have and, and really making it feel as close to a real living world as you possibly can get. Yeah, to. it feels like GTA is sort of the arcadey brand for Rockstar and yeah. Red Dead Redemption is much more their down to earth kind of gritty, visceral <laughs> take on the experience yeah. uh, on their on their sort of platform really, you know, that they've made. But you were mentioning about those tiny little details of him just like swapping hands from his offhand to his main hand. And I noticed a bit in the trailer, it's it's near the beginning, if I remember correctly. Um, and it kind of goes back to E3 where the Last of Us 2 trailer came out and you saw all these interesting little animations that seem to be done in real time um, and not, you know, um, not scripted or anything like that. Like when when uh, Ellie is moving through uh, the uh, the abandoned convenience store and she's just sort of touching things as she walks oh, yeah, through. Yeah. Um, I kind of got a hit of that in this trailer the, towards the beginning when uh, the, your character gets thrown out of the window of the <laughs> saloon. <laughs> yeah. And he hits like the uh, he hits the, the the wood planks of the walkway and then falls in the mud and then rolls and stands up. And that didn't seem scripted at all. That seems sort of. Like like a physics based yeah like, like a mm -hmm. physics based the, uh, the uh, cutscene ended with him going through the window and then the world itself just picks up from there exactly mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't I mean I don't know if that's exactly how it, it is it could be scripted um, totally I think I mean I think the action of getting through through the window is obviously scripted sure yeah um, whether or not it's particularly rendered or if that's just like a camera move attached mm -hmm. to your ragdolling body though I have no idea yeah well I mean uh, the, what what struck me is the guy comes out and you get into a fist fight with him in the trailer yeah, yeah. and the the seamless transition from the guy coming out to you standing up to the interactivity where you start fighting there didn't seem to be a break there there totally no, could not. be mm -hmm. but it definitely seems like the physics in this game are going to be such that you are going to react to the world in a way that isn't necessarily scripted and that oh, seems yeah. really really cool like i can't wait to see a character get bucked off a horse so, oh you see sorry go ahead so sorry just like keeping it on the characters thing I had this weird, like, almost Simsy moment while watching it. So, like, in the Sims trailers, a lot of times they'll point out, like, these really, like, weird, offbeat people that you can make in The Sims, and especially with their like, professions and other things. And I almost had that same feeling with this trailer because they were very, like, that guy's a character. Like, that guy yeah. is kind of mm -hmm. weird, and, like, this person's, like, the standout yeah. that you're going to go interact with. But it seemed to, like, just keep happening. But, I mean, and so, like, that's so interesting to see, like, how much they're relying on saying, like, hey, you can interact with all these people and you can insult them and you can threaten them and you can do all these things. Yeah. And I think that's another facet of this that's just going to be really, really interesting is, like, how you interact with, of course, like, with the world, but with the people of the world and, like, shape that. Yeah, I mean, again, it's sort of going back to that sort of, like, interactable fidelity or interactive fidelity. God, brain, come on. Um <laughs> It's it's that notion where it's like you see, you know, the old Civil War vet mm -hmm. uh, who's, you know, looks like I think he was like missing an eye or something or missing a leg, like crutching against that side of the building. You see that dude robbing the train with that big fur coat. You see the old man talking and trying to sell Arthur a horse. Yeah. Um, I don't I think that only the dude in that one cutscene is actually a character. I mean maybe the guy at the train too, but I'm pretty sure like the guy against the wall with the with the Civil War jacket for example, like he's very prominently focused like you see Arthur interacting with all these different characters and I think the idea is that that's everybody. Mm. You know, yeah. whether or not you're able to have like full-fledged scripted quest lines or anything, probably not literally in every NPC you meet, but you do have the ability to interact not just with in some your capacity fist to your with guns. everybody. Yeah. Right. But like, beyond just hello. Right, and beyond and the, the, the one version where it was essentially yeah. like... Where there was know. like the same model in 10 different color swaps and then the guy in the pinstripe suit with the asymmetrical haircut and you're like, I should talk to him. Right, yeah. or it's just like red a red dot and a blue dot. Yeah. Or yeah. I can punch this man or I can walk past him and we'll mm -hmm. never speak about anything ever again. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> it, those are your two options. Yeah, I know, I know. Right? Like that's how it goes when you go to a saloon. 
One of the things I really liked in the first Red Dead that it looks like they're kind of bringing back in a new way. I mean, they're bringing back a lot of the old mechanics, like mm-hmm. sort of fleshed out. It feels really like natural that you could go hunting or that you could interact with NPCs and yeah. such. Um, but those campfire moments where you would go to a campfire and like sort of a little story would be told. Yeah. It looks like those have been sort of reimagined in a new sort of fun way. Yeah, I mean, the, the ones that we see a lot in the trailers so far, um, there's been that, a couple of moments in trailers two and three. And then again, in this one, uh, which is a little more pronounced uh, with uh, the old dude, uh, Hosiah Matthews, I think his name is. Cool guy. Um <laughs> You don't have a cell phone? <laughs> I mean, I do. I, I do. I um, forgot to take it off. I put it on silent. It's okay. Um, I'm sorry. I called you out. That was super <laughs> shady. It's no, no, totally right. fine. I just got a text message. So I hope it was a good one. Um, yeah, so what are the campfire moments? Sorry, like so those camp- nope. the campfire moments in that one are the ones we've seen are all based in your gang's camp. Mm-hmm. And we already know that that's going to be like a huge, huge part of mm-hmm. the experience is sort of yeah. caring for your gang, getting to know your gang. Um, and you know, those, those moments, like in the old Red Dead, you would sit down at a campfire and then it would sort of transition to this little cutscene mm-hmm. where you would either like, if you were just by yourself, you would, you could clean up, you could fast travel, you could yeah. change your outfits. Um, you get to save. Yeah. yeah if nice. you other folk, if you were with other people, uh, it would transfer this weird little, to this like other alternate camera angle where they would talk to you for a while. Maybe you would talk to them back and mm-hmm. then you can get up and leave. Um, and it's, it's similar to that, but it's just a lot more detail Mm -hmm. basically Um, like all of those moments that we've seen in those trailers like Hosea telling the story about how he and Dutch first met or Mm -hmm. the one about I forget the guy was accusing him of robbing something I forget what it was in this trailer exactly Mm -hmm. Um, those are again just moments where you can walk up you can walk around you can walk by and he'll still have those moments you just might not be a part of them yeah Yeah. across the board everybody I think we're all commenting on that attention to detail that you just brought up the guns that are dirty that you have to clean and then reload with individual bullets Like, like it's just Every little thing in this game has been thought of, it seems like, and I can't wait to see what the full game is going to be like. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think the next drop they're supposed to have is like a gameplay. Um, yep, the next thing we're supposed to on, yeah, on quests and missions. Yeah, it's going to be quests and missions. Um, so it looks like we're probably going to be in for at least one more of these gameplay videos. Um, when, obviously, who knows, uh, we'll probably, you know, be. <laughs> Just sitting around our offices, and it'll just be like, oh, hey, by the way, this is coming out in yeah. 20 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay, cool. It's so uh, weird to think that this is coming out this year. I know. It's so is weird to think really? this is coming out in like <laughs> yeah, not just this almost year. Yeah. less than two months. It's true. Almost less than two months. Yeah, it's October, just three months. Nice. October three months 26th. Point, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. That almost, almost two months. A little horrifying for us wiki ears. Ah. Um, yeah, I can't even imagine. <laughs> yeah. We'll do yeah. it. It'll be good. Oh, it'll be great. Y'all, y'all can come right here. Probably had to be best friends with your horse. Yeah. <laughs> send food and help, please. Yeah. So anything else on uh, Red Dead before we move on? No. Nope. You good? You good? good. Okay. And, uh, I think we can all agree we're super excited. Yeah. Want to see more? Yeah, for sure. We'll talk a lot more about this as so, the weeks go on. Yeah. So next up, I have been out a lot recently because I went to Montreal to, mm-hmm. I just Montreal to go see Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Um, so we had a big preview come out from Sydney last Friday, which is like, she played, I think, like four hours of the game, and then oh, cool. I saw the same demo, but for a lot longer. Um, and there's a lot to say about that game so far. I think if you haven't checked out our IGN First coverage, please do. Um, we have the first 15 minutes. We have a big old feature on like the biggest changes. Um, and then our preview, which we kind of touched on how it's still very much just Tomb Raider. Mm-hmm. Um, I think a big change from this from Rise was that, of course, it's switching developers. Mm -hmm. So now IDOS IDOS is taking the lead, which they've been involved in the first two, um, where Crystal was the lead on those. And so there are definitely very visible changes in seeing that. Um, I think the one thing that stands out most to me is how Lara looks. Like if you look at her face and like certain cutscenes, like her eyes just look a little bit bigger and like Hmm. she just looks almost younger. Anime anime Lara Croft? It's more, it's more, like a tad cartoony, okay, but not bad. It's just different. Like, yeah. and you can tell that it's there, but it's not huge. Um, but otherwise, like, it definitely still just feels like a Tomb Raider game, which is good. Feels like a new Tomb Raider. Yeah, game. a new Tomb Raider game. Yeah, like there's upgrades. Wonderful. There's more to do. There's more yeah. to see. Um, everything definitely felt bigger, mm-hmm. and that was evident immediately. Like as soon as you dropped in, I'm like, wow, this is a pretty big area. It's like, oh, this is even the biggest area. It's like, okay. Oh no. <laughs> um, I mean, the setting is cool too. Speaking yeah. of areas, like. I mean, how <laughs> we went through a period there, folks, uh, in 2012, where Mayan civilization was all the rage yep. for obvious reasons. <laughs> yeah. um, but this this is cool. Like, w- what I appreciate about Lara Croft is the same thing I appreciate about Indiana Jones, where it is 
grounded and it's a real story about history and all that but there's just a like a fleck of supernatural it's in there. A little I romantic. love it I love the supernatural stuff I, I think that's too. what, that's what pulls me to it some people don't but I, I love like oh man when the Ark of the Covenant gets open and everyone's faces melt and I'm like oh, <laughs> oh man <laughs> you're like, what? Nazis and yeah. now, now there's mm-hmm. like this biblical yeah. artifact Indiana Jones yeah. walks into a small cave and there's like just a, a million year old man yeah. chilling there <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I love that I know some people don't and everyone's cup of tea and yeah. all that but I, mean, I think it, I think it depends sh- on how it's handled she stabbed a snake in the face. I haven't watched it. It was an eel. It was, they're very oh, scary. Yeah. I don't like it. Yeah, they're I really eels. creepy. No. I hate them so much. Yeah, so like another big part of this is like underwater exploration. So before cool. like you could just barely swim below. Yeah. And now they're like, you could go further. And there's like these plants <laughs> you can have so that she can stay underwater lo- uh, longer. Just like just Gillyweed? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> cool. Wait, um, plants or plans? Plants. Oh, plants. plants. Yeah, like when you're swimming around, it's like if you want to stay underwater longer, you can find these plants and just eat them. Just Are they just full hmm. of oxygen? Yeah, I maybe. guess so. I don't. Okay, Gillyweed. cool. No, I'm here for that. All right, I'm it's into it. It's Tomb Raider. It's a so. little <laughs> magic. Supernatural. Yeah, yeah, and so like, there's a definitely a big emphasis on like exploration of this area because you do go to awesome. South yeah. America. I mean, it's a whole new environment. Um, and honestly, I think the story seems a little bit more interesting than Rises did. Mm. So I like the first one a lot. Great to hear. Rise was. It was okay. Was, yeah, was it, was, it was a it was a satisfactory follow up to an. Excellent game. Yes, um, and, and then, that was, it would be hard to beat that first one. Like yes. to be honest, like immediately afterwards too. Yeah. yeah, and so then I think what this one's doing is that the way they've explained it to me is like the first one was about Lara learning to survive and like kind of coming into the coming into her own. Yeah, the kind of getting that moniker. Yeah, and then Rise was about her kind of coming to terms what it means to be with a Croft, and then this one's her kind of like full fledged Tomb Raider. But like also, what does that mean with her and her responsibilities and mm-hmm. what's her relationship to Trinity and like mm. is she really the one that has to stop them or whatever? Mm-hmm. And um, cool. If you guys don't know, like it's about obviously my apocalypse and how she's actually the catalyst for that. Like she starts it because Into of it. her, um, because of her tomb raiding. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. of her magical yeah. adventures. <laughs> um, and it, it gets pretty brutal too. Like they don't pull punches, and a lot of this is obviously darker and heard. spikier, as you mm-hmm. can see. Yeah, um, I'm curious if that's well, maybe why they made the character design a little less. Like you were saying, it's a little, not cartoony, but like a little less Fresh authentically face. real. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. she looks so, a little different. Yeah. So, I mean, maybe that could be, because like, I mean, there in that, in that first one, I only remember, I, I remember very little of the second Tomb Raider, um, but I remember that first one. There was some so really bad. brutal, yeah. horrible so, sequences. Oh, so that was, really oh I died in this one. Uh, when I played it at E3, it's still pretty gross. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, that, okay. Yeah. That was the thing. The first game was, I mean, you say this one's darker and spikier, and I specifically remember sliding down a river and then catching a branch through her jaw. That yeah. goes like through the back of her head, and I was like, "That is horrifying, yeah. like a yeah. fish hook almost." And, you, yeah. and you were saying this one's darker and spikier. Do you think that? Wow, she just disappeared into the bushes. Do you yeah. think? Um, do you think <laughs> they're trying? Part, do you think- the video. She hangs a man. She hangs a man with her bow and so arrow to she, self-kill. I'm really curious if that's a contextual thing or if that's a pre-rendered animation. That's that's a thing you can do to people. That's mm-hmm. just a self-kill. And so Rat. getting into that darker. Yeah. And- so do you think they're like raising this? Like they have to raise the stakes. Yeah, I think like this is the evolution of her character, right? This is like the finale of her origin story and coming into being the Tomb Raider and like mm-hmm. what does that mean? And I think up until this point, the way that everyone, all the developers I talked to talk about it, uh, sorry, all, all they all said that this is kind of her physically there, but not necessarily mentally or emotionally. Like she's mm. taken all this burden on, but she's not really worked through it or processed it. Mm. Um, Fun, she's like real strong up. and she's really intense. So this is a game about trauma healing. Kind of, yeah. But, like, all the ways you're not supposed to do that, i.e. Yeah. murdering people with bows. Yeah, it's, like, also, like, you can right. be stealthier and, like, kill people in more ways, but also you have to stop the apocalypse because it's on your shoulders because you were hasty and didn't listen to your friend and all this other stuff, so. What? Yeah. When you played those stealth mechanics, how did you feel? Were they pretty smooth? Were they easy to integrate? Because when oh, yeah. I played at E3, it's like you rub mud on yourself and you can hide into in the leaves on you the wall. You predator? predator yourself? Basically, yeah. yeah. And uh, awesome. you can stealth kill all, all the bad guys. Uh, what did you think, though? Like, playing more than I did, obviously. Yeah, so I definitely felt the difference there. It felt, like, of course, having more tools to be stealthy is always a thing that I like, because I prefer oh, yeah. to go for stealth. Yeah. Um, except for certain situations where I'm like, I see those barrels, we're just we're just going in. I mean, that's <laughs> like, like, yeah. if I get but, spotted by, like, one dude, even if I could probably still say, salvage the rest of the stealth op, you just yeah. salt the earth. <laughs> yeah, it's that thing of just, like, murdering everyone. Like, I'm sorry, this is Bill's yeah. fault. So he stopped me. There are definitely areas where it encourages stealth. It's just like, hey, there's maybe the way that people are positioned, it's not advantageous for you to just run in guns blazing. Mm-hmm. But you can still do that, yeah. which I appreciate. And, like, they've uh, reworked the skill system, too, to, like, better optimize for that. Um, and so I think 
both ways are still super viable. Um, I like I said, prefer to do stealth just because I think it's cooler. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, I, think too. Just, I think I love stealth because stuff. like it's fun and like the whole predator thing's really cool, and it, it adds that layer of challenge that I'm looking for. Right, it's yeah. like can I do this 100 percent stealth? And when it all goes to crap, you know, you I pull mean, that's your gun. what I really loved about <laughs> open yeah. action games recently, and especially with the new Tomb Raiders, where it's like when you see really good work on the design and where they're creating, like if you if you look at like old Assassin's Creed, like Assassin's Creed Two, like uh, Assassin's Creed Two or Brotherhood, like they're like, okay, we want you to can do this stealthily, and mm-hmm. we're gonna build this whole arena just around giving you ways to do this without being seen. But now mm-hmm. it's like, okay, we're gonna let you, you know. You can stealth it. It's going to be a really interesting stealth arena with plenty of options for you to have really cool stealthy moments. Mm -hmm. Or it's going to be a super fun shooting arena if you fuck up. I'm sorry, if you mess up. (laughs) That's two bleeps this episode, everybody. All of them are from me. I'm terribly sorry. I'll never be back on the show again. No, we'll have you back. It's all good. Oh, thank you. Um, You should hear me when I play certain games. Anyway. Right? uh, (laughs) I I have. Bleep two. It's real bad. Bleep two. That's for the editor. (laughs) Okay. <laughs> anyway, yeah, no, I love having that option. It definitely felt that way with every arena that I entered with all the enemies. So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It just also just feels great to get headshots. So. Yeah, is it satisfying? Yes. Cool. It's all very. Right. That's, that's one of those yeah. things that's like got to be key. Like if, if you can manage to pull off a headshot, it's got to be worth it. Yeah. And then uh, another big thing that I keep touching on is that they changed how difficulty works. So you have difficulty oh, settings. Is. It's really cool. So for combat, which is normal, like, no yeah. surprise there. But then they also have difficulties for puzzles and exploration, mm-hmm. oh, which is, so if you don't really like the puzzles in Tomb Raider for whatever reason, which I think that'd be really weird, yeah. you can put that on easy. And so I, I could see this being really useful if you're stumped mm-hmm. and you're like, you just want to get through it. Or um, you could put it on hard and play through our guide with our wiki <laughs> right there. Uh, That's what you should do. Also, if you just need help on like, say one thing, a really good hint, or maybe just the next step, you can change it to easy and you pre- press the button for survival instinct, which is kind of like shows the world um, and like highlights your next object that you need to interact with in blue. And then Lara will just literally tell you the directions for what you need to do. So oh, you should get wow. this and then do that. <laughs> and like she doesn't tell you the entire puzzle, but she tells mm-hmm. you that part of the puzzle. She like clippies you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Good. Yeah. So it's like really cool. And then of course, if you put on hard, you don't get anything. Yeah. So and like I'm, it also removes, so if you're putting on hard with like exploration, like it removes all the white paint. So yeah. you can't really tell what you can interact with immediately. So this, this is what I really love because a lot of times, even with God of War when we were playing it, um, you know, earlier this year. This is an Xbox podcast. Shh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> when we're playing like God of War or other exploration games, you're running yeah. along and then you see like a cliff with white paint just dripping down the side. And yeah. it's like, all right, I guess I go there. <laughs> yeah. um, I mean, that's... And, you know, it, it, look, I, I'm not trying to say like it ruins the immersion. I'm, I don't want to be that guy, but it kind of ruins the immersion. Like, it, uh, you know, you're running it around. It gets to a certain like, point. You're like, you, look, you have I mean, to telegraph to the player somehow. Though. For sure. For yeah. sure. But I'm in a forest and suddenly there's like someone with a, a can of white paint that was just dripping from their <laughs> bag, like did all this traversal and I'm just following their path. Mm-hmm. I mean, what was the game that did it with bird poop? Was it? I think it was oh. the first Tomb Raider Redux and Assassin's Creed yeah. used to do it too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I really like that. The okay. bird poop one is great. Um, I think other games like Far Cry do it okay. Yeah, Far- those are still bright blue like racks. Playing playing Far Cry Five, it was always or recently it was like yellow rope or yeah. something like that to, mm-hmm. to signify what ledges you're supposed to go up. Yeah, and I get it. I appreciate that. Um, I'm not taking anything away from those games, but I love the inclu- the inclusion of the ability to turn that off. So you're yeah. like, oh, that looks like a cliff. I could probably scramble up. Oh, like, yeah. Cool. I, right. And the big thing with that too is like, Lara doesn't give you any audio indicators either. Like she doesn't like say, oh, look at that thing, or just mm-hmm. mentions anything about her surroundings. She's just quiet. Yeah. So it's all I need to figure out. Cool. So on max settings, it's just like glowing neon. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it looks like, like I'm here. Pretty, just pretty much. Like open yeah. lake signs. Like pointing <laughs> yeah. <at> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like they, they make the white paint more prominent. If it's yeah. Easy. Yeah. yeah. I saw we, I mean, I, th- I mean, we, we have a comparison right up on the site right yeah. now where it shows like easy, medium, hard. And it is a very uh, obvious distinction between mm-hmm. easy and hard. Like you might miss that or you will definitely <laughs> see that. You know? Yeah. It's yeah. like if you miss that, <laughs> I mean, that's a really impressive thing guys, for the developers too yeah. like I mean that's one of those things where being able to toggle that on and off because usually those things are rendered and hard coded into the environments themselves yeah. um, so just a sh- I mean a shout just a general shout out sorry I was, I was like this whole thing but just like I think that's really cool guys great no, job it really way to go. is though I mean it just it's just the paying attention to what kind of players they have right and yeah then, the puzzles or the exploration mm-hmm. or finding the collectibles it's not for everybody and so they want to make that easier for you to do if you want to make it easier or harder. 
That's mm-hmm. super cool. Very little difficulty depending um, on which aspect you like. There's also like a great pro tip on that. Uh, if you want to play on like the hardest settings for everything um, and get the achievement to do that, you can also kind of gain back some of your survival instincts and like helpful indicators through skills. Oh, cool. Um, mm. So there's some skills that will like make things more visible or easier to find. And those like kind of a way to recover it if you are playing on hard. Interesting. So you can unlock you the get, woodland. What yeah. You call so it's it? like woodland the detective it. perk yeah. or fourth yeah. Batman. Batman it's like woods. a tad easier to get that hard mode <laughs> yeah. achievement. Yeah. So. Nice. Cool. Um, there are also even more things to help you out. So there are three plants that you can craft into like a tonic or something. Mm-hmm. Um, there's one for focus, endurance, and perception. So perception is like a heightened survival instinct. So it just kind of highlights important things in the environment, which survival instinct does. But it highlights more things. So like pretty much anything you can pick up. And then also what works while you move. So like it's kind of cool because when I used it, like everything went really gray. And then, there, like everything was like kind of yellow that you can yeah. interact with, oh, but yeah. it just stays that way for a while. And it's sort of like in the first, similar one. to the first game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's like what she has sure. for mm-hmm. survival instincts, but it stays as she moves around, which isn't. Yeah. What, what happens? You don't have to stand still. So it's like, and yeah, listen. more intense. Um, the focus plant slows down time for a second whenever you aim, mm, so cool. it kind of helps with combat. And then also the endurance, I think, is just more like of a health buff. Cool. So take more hits. Cool. More stuff. Crafting. Cool. Yeah, there's plenty of things. Hell yeah. Still kill animals. Makes me sad. And people. <clears throat> and, and plenty Pirates. of people. So many people. Are there still those challenges that I had to do for the first one that yes. I just won't? Oh, no. Challenges exist. <laughs> are they are they eye gouging?ly Difficult. Um, not still? the ones that I came across. I don't remember right, cool. the challenges. Is it? Like there were the ones where it was like point find, a, point B? No, 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 no. It was like uh, for each area, it was like find ten, oh, yeah. like teeny, like pygmy skulls, yeah. and it would be like a skull the size of your fist. I remember up this in the now. corner of a branch or something, or like the buoys. Find the in old the ocean. World War II audio logs or something. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. There's all sorts of collectibles and challenges and things for her to find. Hooray! And uh, it's almost harder too because you can go underwater and find <laughs> stuff now. Great. Oh, and great, there's like these little great. crevices you can swim through sometimes. And if you miss it, then it's like, well, I just missed his treasure chest. Oh, Lord. Because you know what collecting needs? (laughs) Spelunking. Yeah, Yeah, for sure. Um, Uh, So primary developer this time around is Eidos? Yep. Cool. And not Crystal D. Did they say say why they're handing off? Um, I think that was just like the right move at the time. It's what they all felt like. They wanted to take it on. And they had, of course, like I said, at the very beginning of this conversation, that Eidos has been on the Tomb Raider games Mm -hmm. since the beginning. So it's not like it's they don't have any experience with this. Yeah, the support developer Um, now becomes the... The lead. And then Crystal Dynamics did provide a lot of support for this as well. Yeah. I wonder if it's because Crystal's focusing on their Avengers game. Mm. Hmm. Hmm. Who's going to tell? It's time for Avengers Part 2. Yeah. I'm fitting with that. Cool. When is that out again? Because I'm a bad employee here and I don't remember. Infinity War Part 2? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider is out next month. I want to say Hell September. Yeah. September. But also, I don't oh remember the exact my. date. It's, I thought it was like the 14th or something. I'll have to double check. Cool. But awesome. I, don't I will look it up real quick on my cellular telephone. My brain is mush. That I have. That's A-OK. I'm sorry. Um, I Infinity War is next year, right? Uh, it's two years from now. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. Anyway, it is kind of much just because we have so much Tomb Raider coverage on so, the site right now, and I really hope you guys check it all out. September 14th. A lot going on. Yeah. Awesome. I was right. You did it. You did Man, it. I'm good. Anyway. Cool. Well, I'm 100% going to be checking that busy one month. Busy month. Yay. Yeah. It's busy couple of months. Uh, <laughs> busy rest of the year. Yeah. Because, yeah. I mean, right after that, we've got you go from Assassin's Creed Odyssey. You start with Spider-Man and end with, what, what's the last game in November? Fallout or Pokemon. Call yeah. of Duty, I don't know. No, Call of Duty is early this year. October, maybe. What about December? Just Cause. Just Cause and... Yeah. I know it Smash. starts in September, and then so it's crazy games. after that. Yeah, yeah. it's just yeah. regular old madness. Spider-Man September 7th or September 9th on PS4, which apparently I'm not supposed to talk about because it's an unlock. Get out of here, you've lost your card. <laughs> I love all platforms, but yeah, mostly Xbox. Same, same. It's like if I can choose, give it to me on Xbox. Thank yeah. You. Anyway, so we have plenty of news to get into as well, because this year just keeps going. So we this have week. more news. <laughs> it's only Tuesday. Guys, it doesn't stop. It's, but that's fine. That's fine. Uh, so Tom Marks went down to QuickCon for us. Yay. Very, very kind man. If you Wait. follow him on any it's platforms, so give him a big old shout out for the last couple of weeks and the next coming couple of weeks as well, because that man it works very, very really hard. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, seriously. Like He got so many good pieces out of QuakeCon. Yeah. Um, First, I want to kick off with Fallout 76 because that's one of the games I'm most excited for this yeah. season. Oh, yeah. me too. And uh, if you guys hadn't heard, we talked about the beta last week, mm-hmm. but now we know their plans for PvP a little bit more, which I think is super exciting. Um, so Collectible cards. That mm-hmm. too. Um, <laughs> yeah. So first, I want to get into PvP a little bit as yeah. far as how griefing works and how they're going to kind of try to 
counter for that, which I think is really important, right? Because I know everyone going into is like, oh, I don't want to fight other people and get constantly picked off. And yeah, so mm-hmm. I, I'm totally not going to lie. I 100% missed that particular Fallout 76 story yeah. this weekend. So please explain it to me as if I were a child. There are a few. It's all good news. Yes. So Todd Howard describes PvP as I slapping someone in a bar. I love that quote. <laughs> God. Okay. So how it works is if you are attacked by somebody that can only do a little bit of damage to you. Okay. That's still damage, but it's very little. Yeah, it's skilled way. Um, yes, and unless you attack them back, they will only do that little bit of damage. But once mm-hmm. you attack them back to initiate combat, they both do full damage. Interesting. And so, I think Borderlands 2 did something like this. Like, if you want to have a fight with your friends, I mm-hmm. think you could just punch each other, right, and then start a fight? Yeah. Yeah, something I think, similar? I think, that, I think that was similar. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm curious, like, will they, it'll get to the point, like, could someone theoretically just follow you around, like, bashing yes. you on the back yes. of the head with a football ball bat so, until you pass and, out? So all yes. this is covered. It gets better. Yeah. Yes. So Todd Howard said that, yes, you can kill someone that way. Great. Mm-hmm. I think that'd be your own fault if you died that way. That but, is 100% how I'm well, going to kill I, I, every I'm thinking, single like, person. You're well, AFK and someone walks up and just, like, punches you 1,200 times and then you come back. It's also your own fault. Yeah. You <laughs> might not do that, John. Because yeah, this gets real. Yeah, yeah. So if you kill somebody that way, you're marked as a wanted murderer. Ooh. And, uh, I love. You do not get any reward, cap experience, or loot, or anything else for the kill. So you, whenever you okay. kill someone, you don't get anything for it. Mm-hmm. Um, but a bounty is also added to the head of the murderer, so that everyone can not only see them on their map. So every player on the server will see you on their map, right? And they will know that there's a bounty on your head. And so all of a sudden, free money. Yeah, like you, you are free money, and the bounty is paid out of your pocket. Yeah, that's. Oh man! So it's like That's if you, if okay. you're the murderer, you're a <laughs> and you lose all player indicators. Yes. So like you have, you're basically <laughs> map blind while everyone knows exactly where oh, you are. No. Mm-hmm. So wait, and uh, as of that point, after you kill someone, I assume that the damage nerfing on you goes away. Oh yeah, I probably. Imagine. I imagine. Cool. Yeah. And so uh, Howard said they wanted to turn the assholes into interesting content, which I that sure as hell so makes things behind. interesting. What I yeah. love about this is you're gonna oh this is gonna be so great. You're gonna get roving gangs of vigilante mm-hmm. uh, like justice deliverers. <laughs> yeah. They're gonna be like wild west gangs going around just mm-hmm. like keeping people in line. Yeah. Or, yeah. or you're going to get like basically murder cults who are like everyone's going to kill like one NPC or one other player, mm-hmm. but by doing five points of damage a piece. So my. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Like it's going to be a group of like 20 people who all hit somebody once. <laughs> yeah. And then, yeah, they, then they all share. The I vote. wonder what yeah. happens if you attack somebody like if they're fighting some animal in the environment. Like a great death claw, beautiful, sweet yeah. child. Or a gargantuan sloth monster. And then monster. you hit them once and then they die. I wonder oh, if, if that still counts as blow? no, yeah. no, because you don't. They said if you, what is it? Um, no, more, hold it. Howard says that only, not only do they get no uh, reward, caps, experience, loot, or anything else, but a bounty is also added to their head. So if you kill somebody in that way and they don't attack you back, you don't get anything for it. Well, you, you know, we true. got that, but like, what if it's an accident? Like what if it, what if you would literally have to shoot them like nonstop because it does like one well, HP. So like, well, like, we, we no, don't as know. As Miranda that. was saying though, we, like what if you what if they're fighting a death claw and that death claw has them this close to death and you at, like shoot the death claw but like one of your shotgun pellets I am, tags them. In the I imagine over. it works the exact same way. It is you, bummer. You initiated combat on this person. You happen to kill them because they were super low. You don't get any rewards. I'm gonna. So there's mm-hmm. there's. I mean that's a great point too. There's there's the potential for accidental griefing. So here's the thing. And then you're screwed. That's mm-hmm. going to become my new prank in Fallout 76. It I'm was become, an accident. I'm so sorry. I, no, 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 no. I'm going to become the guy who like accidentally gets killed by people. That's going to be that's, gonna that's your, my griefing tactic. You're going to run around with one HP and just throw yourself in front of gunfire. <laughs> yep. Oh so, my God. That's going to be how it goes. Sorry, <laughs> but, everybody. But to be fair, like in the real life, if you're at a target range yeah. and you're firing and someone walks in front, like you, you know, you're responsible for that. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's something you have to deal with. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I really want to start two accounts, like one for my real game of and course. then one for my griefing account. Right. You're just going to grief yeah. people? I just want to be so right. mean. I cannot wait to I wanna live in, rust. I want to live in the woods. Oh, it's going to be so I cannot oh my wait gosh. to relive our rust days. Me too. Just oh, ro- me so good. Roaming the, the wasteland. We owned that world. Yeah, we did. It was our server. Yeah. It was a lot wow. of fun. Wow. It was good. Oh, right. no, yeah. We had a crew. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to track it down. Met. Uh, oh, that's so and then just walk away. Like we were, uh, we were. <laughs> you Mad Max? Yeah, we were. We were war. We were humongous in that place. Yeah, great. Yeah, 
It cool. was great. Um, can't wait to do it again. <laughs> uh, good. I can't also, wait to be there. I'll happily enjoy that with you guys. Also excited. If you don't want to deal with any of this stuff, they said there's private servers, right? Mm -hmm. So you yeah. can just play. That was the one solo, that I did catch. And I that, cool. I, that so, I like for the purists. It, it reminds me a lot of like, well, I mean, way back in the day, I played a lot of MUDs, which, which mm -hmm. were like PvP based, text based games. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, they were built in such a way that you had to figure out ways to like game the system within the mm -hmm. rules. And to me, that's one of the most fun parts of like emergent games where. I can figure out a way to screw over another player that's technically mm. allowed, but you know, not supposed to be done that way. Right. Yeah. Um, and it also reminds me of like World of Warcraft in the same way. If you're on a PvP server, you know, anything can happen. But if you're on a PvE server and just happen to be in a PvE area, you know, you could mind control somebody. Uh, it would flag you for PvP, but then you jump them off a cliff, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so there's a lot of like fun, like weird griefing ways. And I know like no player wants to get griefed to the point where they don't want to play the game anymore. Yeah. But, but like, but to some degree, it's it's kind of fun to see how you can uh, how you can screw up the intended. <laughs> I really like how this the intended play structure. This segment has now just become us revealing just what specific kinds of assholes yeah, we are. Pretty Sorry. Much. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyways, <laughs> that was a lot of fun. to us. Great cheers job, everybody. To, yeah, cheers to griefing. I yep. Guess. Sorry, Sorry if you run everybody. into us on the internet. <laughs> We're terrible. No, just usually I'm really nice. Do you usually oh, try yeah. to be helpful? Like nine, usually I'm really nice, except for in Rust and or in Fall. <laughs> nine and a half times games, out of ten, yeah. I am a <laughs> I'm gonna create all the virtue. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but never, that 0.5 yeah. times, it's never like, hey, do you need help? Come here. Let me help. Psych sucker, mm -hmm. and then blow yeah. him up. It's, no. a, it's always like you got to we'll be see. a little creative. Yeah. I'm not going to go ahead and go full, you know, Daisy death murder bus. Yeah. Like, no, I'm not going to cause anyone to, like, Get in power armor and then fight one another to the death. What I what I oh. what I love the most of oh, us yeah. was not not the 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 act of violence, but the threat of violence. Where like it's like the power. It's he, just like yeah. you guys are like oh my god, this when is, a group's like this loaded is a case of a study in like <laughs> if this. If this were always sunny episode, this would be the splash screen would come up and it would just be like the one where the gang realizes they're so They're all so sympathetic. <laughs> this is a case study. <laughs> yeah. uh, what, um, what I love is just like creeping around people's houses where they, they clearly have something in there and the fire the campfire is going and you see the shadows move and you're just like, I'm going to kill you all. <laughs> and they freak out. Oh, no, man, don't, please, please. I've been playing for six hours. Oh, my gosh, yeah. Hi, yeah, that was me. Person, that was literally like, me. It's coming. Barricade themselves in this little cabin. They're like, I don't know what to do. I don't have any food left. And I'm just like. Did you burn the cabin down? <laughs> no, I didn't. I was nice. I, was like, I, right. I dropped some food outside your door. Get, get out. <laughs> <laughs> no, there were those people that were creepy that would like run around whispering, though. It's yeah. Creepy. Oh, yeah. Or like you get outside their house and you whisper like, hey. And they're like, who is this? And then you turn your torch off and then turn it back off or turn it on and turn it back off. And they're like, what was that? What was that? God, you guys are monsters. A lot of fun. Lot of fun. No, I'm really excited to see like what kind of situations come out of this. Because I oh, think yeah. with Fallout, like, I love Fallout so much. And having that experience, like that Rust-like experience in there is just mm -hmm. incredibly exciting to me. Emergence. Um, also, a right. uh, thing we didn't talk about, they announced perk cards. Yep. yep. So you're going to get your, your perks through cards. Mm -hmm. Which I'm cool with. It's just a perk delivery system. It's another way yeah. to like, yeah. accumulate power. Um, you could have done it with armor. You could have done it. Well, with, but mm -hmm. um, I think maybe the randomization could be yeah. a little bit of a letdown for everybody because like sometimes you know you want to build your character just the right way, and yeah. now you're gonna have to maybe just the right way, but through some luck. Mm -hmm. so. I mean, I feel like that's sort of a design to keep folks playing. Yeah. Um, just. You know, to increase longevity of wow, longevity. what longevity in online games? God, I know, right? <laughs> that doesn't exist. Um, it's almost like it's a service. <gasps> um, I do like. Wow. I do like. I mean, I've just I just finished playing Dead Souls a bunch, and coming off of that, I really, really uh, it reinforced how much I like improvisation in games. Mm -hmm. So I, I think you jump into a game and you don't get the one you want, but you get one of the ones you want. So now I have to tailor my play style a little yeah. bit differently. Um, and that creates an experience that you wouldn't normally have had. And I think that's why a lot of people burn out on games because they play them the exact same way. I myself am super guilty of this. I always go into certain games the exact same way, sneaky archer. Um, <laughs> but this time around, it's like, oh, I didn't get that bow that I wanted. So now maybe I have to be sword and board or whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pick your analogy. Oh, um, you but yeah, I think it, it forces you to like improvise and change the way you play a little bit and gives you opportunities to experience things a little differently. Yep. Helps keeps helps keeps things fresh. Totally. None of us can speak this morning. I don't know what's going on. Because it's before noon. Because yeah, we change this to ten thirty recording time. Yeah. So. I know. Um, did I, am I am I crazy? Did I see a story that popped in over the weekend that the private servers can enable mods? Yes. So okay. mod support mm -hmm. is something that's that they're awesome. working on. That's and super. And so great. I think yeah, that's. Incredible that they're trying to push forward and try to figure out how to make that happen. I think Todd Howard is very adamant on saying that this is important to us. We know it's important to the mm. Fallout players. It's going to be a challenge, oh, but yeah, they're going to figure it out. 
Um, mini well, they, nukes for everybody. Can't wait to find yeah. Master Chief. Ooh. Well, on the nuke <laughs> front, like if somebody nukes your base, there's a blueprint system. I think it's the only thing we didn't go over from QuakeCon is that uh, you can uh, blueprint your base. So if somebody nukes it, you can easily just rebuild it. That's, oh, like, that's awesome. Nice. No resources. So a lot of people were is concerned that about that. Is that blueprint creation or is it going to be something to, that I have to actively remember to do? Because You I'm have to do, do it. That. You have to do it ahead Damn of time. It. I'll do it beforehand. Yeah. I don't well, believe you, you build it and then just Before have the, the resources, team, whatever okay, they are, for right. a blueprint yeah. and then or make your blueprint. Like, this base we'll needs 5,000 wood and 10,000 yeah, yeah. steel. Mm -hmm. uh, I haven't been following it too closely mm -hmm. uh, since E3 because there's just a million things going on. But is it the same building uh, mechanics from Fallout 4? Is that the same building system? I have to assume it's similar. Bases. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Or is it I mean, like, it might be a little, it, is it a little like, more prefabbed. Is it like canned? Yeah, like prefabrication. I mean, I'd be okay with that. To be honest, I feel like the, the creation system in Fallout 4, while super in-depth and really interesting, was too daunting for me to really just like enjoy are in you, the context of the rest of the game. Are you telling me you didn't make a flamingo graveyard? <laughs> <laughs> no, why would I have done that? <laughs> because it's awesome. <laughs> I, I didn't do it either. I I don't <laughs> believe you for some reason. Well, uh, I guess our house is gonna have a flamingo graveyard. You gonna mark that down for later? Yeah. Yep. I'm gonna I'm gonna make a note. No flamingo graveyards. I'm gonna figure out how to make a sign that says that and put it all over our base. <laughs> I love the idea that you build a base that is just the words "no flamingo graveyard." It's gonna be a <laughs> sixty foot high. Super wall. not practical, but it really gets the point. <laughs> like, what are you guys all doing? Of our, yeah. All of our resources. JR, you can see that from space. You're blowing up our no, no, no. <laughs> all I want, All I want is the little one that's like the no stairway sign in Wayne's okay. World. No, that's it. Okay. No that's flamingo fair. graveyards. Got it. All right. Well, Anyways. Uh, look forward to seeing more of that from the beta in October. I super will, yeah. Cool. And the cool Seems news is it looks like there's a lot more coming out of QuickCon this weekend, too. Yeah, for sure. So next up, moving on to Doom, Doom Eternal news. I keep saying that wrong. I was like, Doom, Doom Eternal. Eternal. You just had to really run it Doom up. Doom anyway, Eternal. Doom and why Doom it, Doom is it called Doom 2? Which what, what, what? is it's basically boils down to SEO, which yeah. search engine optimization, for those of you who don't know. Um, executive, executive producer Marty Stratton said, here we go, said You're they thought about, <laughs> I know I can't see it. I know I'm small, sorry. Uh, Said that they thought about calling it Doom 2, but one reason they avoided it because of the same problem that stemmed from the last Doom's name. Quote, you hear us say it all the time, we call it Doom 2016. And the internet has called it Doom 2016, Stratton explained. We go back and forth on whether it was a mistake to call it Doom, Stratton said. I still don't think it was a mistake because we really were kind of drawing a new line in the sand. sand. This game looks so good, by the yeah. way. Yeah, if you're really watching cool. the video version, like they just they've just nailed the gunplay in this and, and like uh, the sort of cartoony violence of yeah. it. Yeah, they, yeah. They, and they rage too. Yeah. Like that the one where he like bonks that dude's mm -hmm. head down into yeah. his chest cavity. Mm -hmm. Like that's just so funny. Anyway, not Doom 2, because it's too confusing and there's already Doom 2. And yeah. so I mean I like, think that's smart. Like Doom 2 20 whatever year. Yeah. And just like that's not. I mean, well, I think that's it's, it's a smart thing when you have so many yeah. versions of a title or so many games in the series already. Like, you wouldn't want it to be, you know, Doom 2016, Doom 2018, yeah. Doom oh. 2022. Wow. And that's what he says. Like, coming out and saying, we're going to do Doom 2, we would have had to do Doom 2 colon 2018. Right. Yeah, and that's I mean, not fun for anybody. <laughs> no. This looks nice. Like, I mean, you look at it with Assassin's Creed the same way. Like, Assassin's Creed Unity... Well, Everyone was expecting that to be Assassin's Creed Five, but I yeah. think Ubisoft did a really smart thing where they were like, you know what? No, we're not going to do that anymore. Yeah, that, I mean that seems to be a pretty major trend lately: is franchises separating out their games based on subtitles rather than num uh, you know numeric sequels, which was the when which was the trend for a long time. I mean, I feel like after you hit three entries in a game, that's kind of good practice. Yeah, because like, I don't. Sometimes I think the worry is that if. If there is a chronological order to your games and you drop the number, then it leaves room for confusion of like where you can start or play unless you have specifically designed your game to be an entry point for anybody. Yeah. But what, what I've also heard from developers is that, you know, look at Assassin's Creed, run Assassin's Creed, I don't, let's say 22. Um, there's been a lot. People see Assassin's Creed 22 and they're like, oh man, I'm like behind on 21 versions of this game. Like how much story am I going to miss? Right. How much of all this am I going to miss? And like and each one comes with a primer within it. Exactly. Like. And and by and large, you don't need, uh, you know, all of that backstory. A lot of these games, <laughs> a lot of games these days stand alone so cool. on their own. So yeah. like 
saying this is Assassin's Creed 22 is doing a disservice to the game to somebody who might look at it and say like, oh man, I'd love to play that because I love ancient Egypt or I love ancient Greece, but I just can't. I can't put my, you know, 21 games into my backlog before right. I pick this one. Yeah, and that's exactly how I felt about Final Fantasy when I was younger. I didn't want to play it because I didn't know where to start. It was just yep. like, well, do I have to start from the first one? Or which, which there's is, already 12. Yeah, which is crazy because so. Final Fantasy is, are all essentially standalone games. Yep. I gotta go back. I gotta go back and play Doom 2016. I was just totally enamored. Not? No, again. Oh, I mean, okay. yeah. I was just totally was enamored say, by this gameplay out, of Doom Eternal. Yeah. Just watching, I'm like, oh, I cannot wait. It just looks awesome. Like the the strafing, the side to side, and the yeah. new chain mechanic. That's really cool. And the Arena shooters. Awesome. Yeah. I'm back. curious as to where mm -hmm. in the uh, where in the game that particular demo falls, like where you mm -hmm. pick up all that gear. Mm -hmm. It's got to be um, like 60% in or something like that. I mean, least. maybe not, but like what if it's mm -hmm. not though? Like that's my question where it's like, what if that's like, you know, you, you have mm -hmm. like one level of warm up basically as good as you were at the end of Doom 1 and they're like, you know what? No, we're not going to take away all your toys. We're just going to give you new ones. Yeah. I would love that. Me too. That'd be nice. Start strong. Get stronger. Finish strong. Est. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> we did it. We should open a gym. <laughs> oh, God. I don't think I either of us are really qualified to open a gym. Oh, I super am not. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that was kind of our bigger pieces I want to pull out from QuakeCon. But, of course, yeah. we have plenty more on IGN.com, a great site I've heard. I've heard it's good. IGN? Anyway, I like yeah. it. It's all right. I've been there once. I like there. that site. <laughs> Please go there. <laughs> Please we like your us. jobs. <laughs> um, but, yeah, Tom Marks killed it with coverage. And, of course, there's plenty more of that. So mm -hmm. get on it. Yep. Uh, but let's move on to the next story. So we have more news. So Microsoft's The Initiative Studio, a.k.a. the, the Quadruple A Studio. I always write that down because I think it's really funny. I know. Yeah. Quadruple A. Anyway. Um, it? Yeah, quad A. It's, yeah. like, okay. it's like their Last of Us God of War studio. Oh, nifty. Yeah, so they uh, got some new stuff. They got some X God of War and Red Dead Redemption that stuff. Is, so. That is some poachy. Mm -hmm. Which is hilarious yeah. because when everyone, when, when they announced that it's going to be a new Sony Santa Monica, or Sony Santa Monica, for some reason those two words just like are together fused forever for me. But when they announced Microsoft was opening a studio in Santa Monica, you know, a lot of people were saying like there's... There's a big sort of renaissance of game development down in LA now. Like yeah. A oh, yeah, lot of, for sure. A lot of studios are moving in. Yeah. You've got Riot down there. You've got Naughty Dog down there. You've got um, a bunch of different studios going on. And Treyarch down there. Treyarch mm -hmm. is down there. Um, and people I mean, are like, Brothers. this is clearly a move just to poach really, really quality mm -hmm. talent. Yeah, it's a great and, place to start it. And yeah. surprise, surprise, <laughs> Miranda, <laughs> segue. You do it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Microsoft's the Initiative Studio, the the Quad A Studio, has been apparently poaching some um, some talent down there. Um, they have picked up uh, X God of War, Red Dead Redemption staff. Um, it, uh, we should say this comes from Euro Games and Reset Era, who uh, who both got the news on Daryl Gallagher's The Initiative Studio from LinkedIn. So again, thanks LinkedIn for all that you do for <laughs> us. Thank you LinkedIn. Uh, but they picked up God of War's lead producer Brian Westergaard. Westergaard, Westergaard um, from Sony Santa Monica, uh, of course. Um, and, you know, he worked on Rise of the Tomb Raider and Defiance. Uh, they got the narrative consultant, Chris, Christian Cantamessa. A lot of these names this I'm going to butcher, it. and I apologize in advance. <laughs> I butchered it enough today. <laughs> Christian Cantamessa, who was the lead writer on Red Dead Redemption, oh, also worked cool. on Middle Earth uh, Shadow of War. Oh, awesome. Up in Monolith. <laughs> Um, and Manhunt 1 and 2. All right. Uh, they got okay. Crystal Dynamics' yeah. Daniel yeah. Newberger. Not entirely new, but he's been there uh, He's been there for two months. But he was the game director at Crystal, uh, and he helped with 2013 Tomb Raider, a game we just finished talking about. Way to go, buddy. That was a great nice. game. I really loved it. Uh, and uh, as well as some other some other talent up there. But it, you know what this tells me is they are seriously looking to buff out a studio to start doing something. And yeah. if you would notice, a lot of the games that we're mentioning right now are third-person action-adventure, action narrative-based games. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. um, not saying that's like a small smoking gun or anything, but that could kind of give us some understanding of the direction they're going in. And if you look at all the major... MOBAs. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be a first-person MOBA. If you look at all the major quad A, as you would call them, games yeah. lately, they're all tend to, to focus toward third-person action games that tell a story. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. So yeah. it seems like they are, you know... All the all the wheels are turning. They're, they're, yeah, they've started the machine. They're definitely still filling out the staff. I think as part of the screen couch post on LinkedIn that said like we're still looking for these people. And like of course mm. recruiting mm. still. And they, they just hired a recruiter. So yeah, um, filling out that stuff. I but think that's very super good. rad. Um, I'm very curious as to what they're spinning up, especially if kind of mess is working on it. I can't wait to see it. And I don't think we're going to get an announcement until probably 2020. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. I would assume uh, if if even then I. I find it hard to imagine this being a launch title just because the quality and the polish and the years that it takes to achieve that for these games. Yeah. Um, I'm look, I'm, I imagine we're going to see some sort of announcement in 2020 only because 
you know, thought around these parts is that Microsoft will unveil, or Sony might even unveil, a new console uh, either late 2019 or sometime in 2020. I imagine an announcement from this studio would be a good way to sort of shore up whether or not you want to buy an Xbox or the next box. Xbox Two. Next box. X Xbox yeah. Infinity. These, uh, these staff hires also make a lot of sense. I, I dug in a little bit more after Miranda had her initial notes on here, and like you see three of them worked on the Tomb Raider games. Uh, Blake Fisher helped on Dead Rising, apparently. That's according to like IMDb and yeah. such. So Another they, one-time exclusive. They, they understand the Microsoft sort of wheelhouse probably, mm -hmm. and they're like, hey, these were probably good employees that we worked with. Let's get them on this triple quad A, quad a. studio. Quad A. Yeah. yeah. So that's that's exciting to me. Yeah, it, mm -hmm. everything seems to be shaping up. I mean, Microsoft's announcement of five new studios, this one is obviously the flagship, um, and it's really cool to see some movement on this rather than just, you know, they go dormant for two years and then it's like, hey, we're back. I love finding out, even if it's just small little staffing yeah. updates like this. There's little breadcrumbs. I can see yeah, ideas of like that maybe info. what they're aiming toward. Yeah. So. yeah. Which, right. I think is, which I think is good for Xbox especially. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right now any, any news is good news. For sure. Um, that's all we have for news for this week. We could probably talk about plenty more, but we are running out of time. So let's go ahead and oh, kick yeah, it to the, the marketplace the reports. Oh, all right. So we got we got just Brain, a couple of minutes. So I'm gonna just blow through. And pick a, pick some of the cooler names. Mm -hmm. That's what, you what got? I like to do. Some of the cooler names. Okay, like I can just talk like about them. Red Dead Horses more. Uh, out this week, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, starting today, you can get The Walking Dead, the Telltale series final season, episode one. Cool. You all know what that is. Uh, Fall of Light is a story driven action RPG. Also out today. State of Mind is a sci fi thriller. That's uh, out tomorrow, August 15th. Coffee Crisis, out August 15th, where the aliens, the alien species, the Smurglians, have come to Earth, and you play baristas Nick and Ashley in this arcade-style beat-em-up. That's a real thing. Um, the thing that's happening. No. It's gone. <laughs> Wailing Heights is inspired by classic adventure games, where you collect songs and uh, fight monsters. Uh, Hero Defense is a uh, sort of... when they come out. Oh, I'm sorry. That was August 15th. All these are August 15th. Okay. Hero Defense is also August 15th. It's okay. sort of in the same vein of RTS RPG Tower Defense, where your team of slayers must destroy the world's most powerful vampire. Uh, cool. Ferns, Ferns Gate, August 15th, is a fantasy RPG full of monsters and colorful characters where you play an ordinary high, school, high schooler living an ordinary life. Polygod, August 17th. Polygod, that is. Uh, uh, you are Wait, a, say that one more time. Polygod. Okay. Uh, God, you are a one-armed, gun-wielding assassin of legend, <laughs> blending a fast-paced, quake-esque feel with randomness, difficulty, and a power-up system of Binding of Isaac. Not sure how that works, but it sounds cool. It sounds super neat. Uh, Treadnoughts. You pilot a tank in competitive, gorgeous arenas to land deadly shots on your opponents. Uh, this one is one of the more interesting ones. Drunk Foo, colon, Wasted Masters. Uh, master okay. physics define drunk foo techniques by controlling your character's stumbling direction and unleashing. I'm just picturing drunk quap. It's pretty much, yeah, it's quap but a fighting game. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's August 17th. Uh, Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes is actually a game I've had on my radar. It's, mm -hmm. uh, it's super fun. August 17th as well. Um, Keep Talking, Nobody Explodes. You are a player who's trapped in a room with a ticking time bomb, and the other players must give instructions to how to defuse the bomb. That sounds super awesome. I'm. Okay. All right. Cool. Uh, Persian Knights Sands of Wonders is our last game this week, also coming out August 17th, um, where you are. It's a puzzle game where you play a young apothecary who must investigate a curious plague puzzle game. Cool. That's it. I'm going to brew so many potions. So many potions. Just um, pages just flying off. I've, yeah, I've played uh, Keep Talking, Nobody Explodes uh, as in its VR incarnation. I'm curious how that works with just controllers and network play. Yeah? Yeah. I, I haven't played it yet, but it always looked like one of those games that it's, seems super unique. It's delightful. It's a great party game. Cool. Yeah, it's good to know. Always yeah. looking for more party games. It's super fun. Nice. Um, then, of course, for Games with Gold, we have Forza Horizon 2, August 1st through 31st on Xbox One. Get it. For awesome. Honor on yeah. August 16th through September 15th. For Honor come up. also great if you yep. uh, like yeah. action games. Yeah, it's, it's the really fun, unique one, too. So absolutely hop in there if you haven't had a chance to yet. And then about to end, so you have to get it today. Yeah. Or, yeah. or not. I did today. <laughs> Dead Space 3, August 1st through the 15th on Xbox 360 and Xbox One. And then last is Disney Epic Mickey 2, The Power of 2, August 16th through the 31st on Xbox 360 and Xbox One. So I missed Dead Space 3. Thumbs up, get it? Mm, the, yeah, I mean, it's I'm part through. of the pretty it's, decent it's more, of a, it's more of an action game than a horror game this time around. But I'm still probably too scared to play it. Yeah. I think Miranda is the best point in that it's free. Yeah. It is yeah. free. Yeah. So, so if you games, doesn't why not? Yeah, I can Go get it, it and hate it and it wouldn't matter. Uh, yeah, um, we do not have a quiz today no quiz. because Ryan's not here. 
So Alana gets three points. Hooray! It's not fair. Yeah, no, Seth feels like no, 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 no. I'll stand by it. No, this is, <laughs> I'm running by. the show today. So <laughs> that that is law. Oh man! <laughs> Next time Ryan's out and I'm running the show, I get a million points. <laughs> oh. Is that how this works? No, I, have to, I, have to, I have to. I have to Game of Thrones all of you now. You can't do more than three. Yeah. You should remove three it's points from your. From <laughs> no. Miranda, wait. So the Miranda rule doesn't doesn't actually apply when you're not no, hosting it is the law. show. No, it's it is law, law now. now. Okay, no more fun. rules. Super glad I came on, guys. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, John. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't kill me. <laughs> anyway, let's go ahead and wrap it up. What are you guys working on? What do you want to? Going to Gamescom. Up? So oh, yeah. doing a bunch of capture this week, pre Gamescom, and then going there. Check out. Twitter.com slash at Destin Laguerre, and you can follow my shenanigans while I'm there. Very nice. Right on. Ran in. Uh, I just finished up the Dead Souls review last week. Um, it is a very good game. I gave it a 9.5. Go check out the review if you haven't. And if you're at all interested, please pick it up. It's so cool. Um, this week, we've got a lot of really interesting stuff going on that I can't just talk about yet, but uh, stay tuned. Well, fun. I know. <laughs> you leave them wanting more. That's fair. That's absolutely fair. Um, speaking of something that Rockstar is really good at, it's leaving us wanting more. Mm-hmm. Um, but in the interim, until we get that next gameplay trailer for Red Dead 2, um, I'm going to be continuously diving into. I've already done a bunch of analysis for the last gameplay trailer that we got from Red Dead, which you can see on IGN right now. Um, I'm also working on uh, all of their uh, GTA online updates because even though that game is turning five this year, it is still getting a ton of love from their dev team. So crazy. Um, they just uh, dropped a huge, huge update a couple weeks back and continuously have been updating it every week since then. If you have stepped out of GTA online in the last couple of years, I highly recommend you jump back in. Um, and also doing some great work with our friends over at Ubisoft uh, for Assassin's Creed Odyssey. I've been spending a lot of time in ancient Greece and I'm really enjoying what I'm seeing so far. So you can check out all of our impressions of that on IGN as well. Nice. And I'll spew all this on my Twitter is, is at USFJR. So. Marvelous. And you can follow me at Havoc Gross on Havoc with a K. Um, of course, I've been talking about it the entire show. I've been working on the Tomb Raider IGN Yay. first, so please check it out. We've been working real hard in between everything else to get that up. Uh, so be sure to check that out. And of course, stay tuned for Gamescom coverage because we have more Tomb Raider stuff coming from there as well. Yep. Yeah. And so, for everyone, I'm Miranda Sanchez, and thank you guys so much for joining us, and we'll see you next week. Bye, everybody. Bye.